My name is Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I will spend today's uh, lecture on a uh, certain number of theorems. We can call it mini theorems. They're not really very difficult at all. Um, related to uh, similarity. Um, I'm planning to at least another lecture devoted to different theorems. Um, it's very, very useful for you if you spend some time trying to prove these theorems yourself. Uh, notes for this lecture contain all the different theorems. I think there are seven or eight of them. Um, I will prove them right now in front of you. Uh, but again, it's very important for you to spend time, at least an hour, for um, just getting into um, the, this logic, these theorems, before you listen to my lecture. Now, after the lecture is finished, if you understand everything, again, go to the notes and uh, try to prove all these theorems yourself once more, just to make sure that you basically understand how, how it works. Okay. Um, given two points, A and B, position on the leg of an angle with vertex P, point A is closer to P. Okay, so we have an angle, and we have two points, A and B. And two other points, C and D, positioned on another C and D. Segments on one leg, PA and AB, PA and AB, are proportional to segments on another leg, PC and CD, which means PA to PC is AB to CD. This is given. Prove that segments AC and BD are parallel. So AC and BD must be parallel. Okay, now this is uh, obviously about similarity of triangles PAC and PBD. Now, to prove the similarity, um, one of the uh, theorems which we learned before was that if there is an uh, angle and sides which form this angle are proportionate, then the triangles are similar. In this case, we don't have sides PB and PD proportional to PA and PC, but we do have AB and CD. So the question is, is proportionality of A, B, and C, D to P, A, and P, C sufficient for proportionality of P, B, and P, D? Well, the answer is yes, and to prove it, it's actually very easy. Um, since this ratio is the same, let's call it, let's say, K. Now, that means that P, A is equal to K times P, C. And A, B is equal to K times C, D, right? PA over PC is K, so PA is PC times K. Same thing here. AB is CD times K. Now, if um, PA and AB, uh, now if I will add them together, these two, I will have on the left PA plus AB, which is PA plus AB, which is PB. Here, uh, using distributive law, I can factor out K, and in the parentheses I will have PC plus CD, PC plus CD, which is PD, which means that PB over PD is exactly the same K, same as this one. So now we have this proportionality, PA over PC, is equal to PB over PD, and is equal to the same constant. Now, this is already a sufficient condition for similarity. PA over PC, actually we can write this 
this particular uh, equality in slightly different form, uh, since PA to PC is PB uh, to, P, to PD, obviously PA to PB is equal to PC over PD. These are exactly equivalent uh, equalities because both of them means that PA times PG cross multiplication is equal to PB times PC. And this is exactly the same. PA times PG is equal to PB times PC. So obviously this is exactly the same, and this is a more familiar expression for proportionality of the sides. So we have a smaller triangle, PAC, and bigger, PBC. Now we see that the corresponding uh, sides which form this uh, angle, which is common for these two, PA over PB as PC over PG. So that's proportionality. That means triangles are similar. And uh, uh, that's why these angles are congruent to each other, because they lie against proportional sides of the triangles. <coughs> Okay, my Kindle, for whatever reason, got stuck. Okay, got it. Um, okay, that's it for the first problem. Now, since these angles are congruent, the lines are, uh, are parallel as uh, two lines and transversal, and these are corresponding angles. Okay, next. Given two non-parallel segments, AB and CD, AB and CD, intersecting at point X, such that AX times XB, AX times XB is equal to CX times XD. Prove that all four endpoints of given segment lie on the same circle. These four points lie on the same circle. That's what's necessary to prove. Okay. Let's connect the dots. Now, obviously, these two angles are vertical, and from this, I will uh, uh, I will convert it into AX over XD is equal to CX over XB. Now, this is exactly the same as this. Um, now, now we see that these two triangles have a um, congruent angle, and sides which form this angle are proportional. AX to XG as CX to XB. So these are similar triangles. Now, since they are similar triangles, then the corresponding angles, and these are corresponding to each other, all, they are congruent to each other. Okay. Now, is that sufficient for um, 
staging that all four points lie on the same circle? Well, actually, yes, and here is why. Let's have a circle around A, B, and C. Now, why point D is supposed to lie on the same circle? Well, let me put it this way. If point D lies in the same circle, then obviously, since this is an arc which supports both inscribed angle, this and this, and that's the same arc, and inscribed angles which are supported by the same arc are congruent to each other. So it's kind of a reverse statement. But what if they are equal to each other? How to prove that this is actually the point D lies on, on a circle? Well, for a very simple reason. You know that if point D lies outside of the circle, then its measure is half the difference between two... Okay, let me put it this way. Now, this angle is measured as half of this arc minus this arc. When I'm saying arc, I mean central angle, which is supported by this arc. So this angle is equal to half the difference between this and this. But this angle is equal exactly half of this arc without any kind of a difference, which means that if D is outside, it cannot be, and it's supported by the same arc as, uh, as this angle, it cannot be equal, it will, be, it will always be less than. Now, if D is inside the circle, it's also impossible for it to be This is our A, and this is our D. Now, again, this angle and this angle are supported on one side by this arc. But since this is inside, there is another arc on another side. And if you remember, if the angle, uh, if, if this particular point is inside um, the circle, then its, uh, now, then its uh, angle is measured by half a sum of these two arcs. So it's either half a difference between this arc and something else if it's outside, or half sum of the same arc and something else. So it's not equal to this angle, which is always exactly equal to half of this arc. So we don't have any other choice but to conclude that the point D is supposed to belong to this circle. That's it. Number three, given triangle ABC and median AM from vertex A to midpoint M of the opposite side. This is median. So these two are equal. Okay. Let PQ be any segment connecting point P on the side AB with Q on the side AC such that PQ is parallel. Okay. So we have some parallel segment, PQ. Okay. Prove that point of intersection X of median AM and segment PQ divides segment PQ in half. All right. So, triangle, this is the median, and this is the segment which is parallel to the base BC. And we have to prove that median divides any segment which is parallel to the base in half. Um, okay, now, um, obviously since these are parallel, um, you can definitely say 
that okay where is my okay here it is I'm losing my So let me put it down so I don't press any buttons. So um, how to prove that px and xq uh, are equal to each other? Well, um, quite simply, because uh, triangle APX is obviously similar to ABM. Since these are two parallel, that means that all angles are equal. These are two parallel lines and uh, transversal, so these angles are equal, these angles are equal, and this is the common one. So these two triangles are uh, similar, which means there is a proportionality of their uh, sides. Okay, Px relates to Bm, Px to Bm as AX to AM. Now, these two triangles, AXQ and AMC, are similar for the same reason, and again, XQ relates to MC as AX to AM. XQ to MC relates as exactly the same, AX to AM. So, what I'm interested in is actually this one. I'm not, I'm not interested in this anymore. I'm interested in this. These two ratios are the same. But now, let's see this. BM and MC, BM and MC, uh, are equal to each other, because this is the median. So these two halves have the same lengths which necessitates that these two, Px and Xq, must also be equal to each other, otherwise we would not have the equality. So this is equal to this. And that's what's necessary to prove. End of story. Okay, back to my Kindle with problems. Uh, that was problem number Three. Okay, number four. Given three rays with common vertex V, three rays, one, two, three, with common vertex V. Okay. Let point A be on one of these rays, and the distances from point A to two other rays are X and Y. Okay, so this is our point A. Now, if we drop the perpendicular to this ray, we will have x, and if we drop perpendicular to this ray, we will have y. So these are distances from point A to two other rays. Prove that ratio x divided by y is constant regardless of the position of point A. So if I will take another point somewhere here and draw another perpendicular and another perpendicular and I will have another x prime and y prime then this theorem actually states that ratio sh should stay the same. Well, now it's kind of obvious because, let's think about it. Uh, this is A prime, right? Now, obviously since these are two perpendiculars to the same uh, line, they are parallel to each other, and uh, these two triangles this and this, bigger and smaller, are similar. 
And from their similarity, we can conclude that this relates to this as this to this, right? So x to x prime is equal to VA to VA prime. X to x prime as VA to VA prime because of similarity of this pair. Now, similarity of this pair is exactly the same. Y over Y prime, this over this, is equal to this over this. That's the proportionality. Again, the same thing, VA over VA. So this is the same, so these are the same. So regardless of where you put point A, A prime, whatever, the ratio uh, remains the same. It's all based on proportionality, which is the consequence of uh, similarity. OK, next. Given trapezoid ABCD with parallel bases BC and AD. OK, so we have a trapezoid. A, B, C, D. Okay. Uh, point M is midpoint of B, C, and N is endpoint of. Okay. So we have middle of the uh, upper base and middle of the lower base. Okay. Now. Prove that point of intersection of diagonals, so we have two diagonals, and we have point of intersection x, uh, lies on the segment which connects m to n. All right, so I am not uh, connecting m to n. But what I do right now, I will connect m to x and then x to n as two separate segments. But I will prove that m x n is a straight line. Now, let's think about it. How can we prove it? Well, in the triangle B C X, x m is basically a median right? Since m divides in half bc. Similarly, in axd, xn is also a median. So, let's um, think about the uh, consequence from the fact that bcx and axd are similar. Well, obviously they are similar because BC and AD are parallel, so these angles are equal to each other and these angles are equal to each other as uh, uh, al uh, alternate interior angles with two parallels and transversal, either this or that. So, BXC is similar to AXD. Now, what follows from this similarity? Well, in particular, that sides are proportional, right? So the side which lies against this angle in a smaller triangle is BX. And in this triangle, against the same angle, it's XD. And it's equal to, let's say, BC, the base, over AD. Right? Now, uh, let us now consider triangle BMX and XGN. I would like to prove that they are also uh, similar to each other. But I will use a different theorem about similarity. 
Now, in case of BCX and AXD, I was using the theorem that if two angles are correspondingly equal to other two angles, then triangles are similar. In this case, I will use another theorem. An angle and sides which form this angle are proportional. If this is true, then uh, I, will, uh, I will have the similarity. Now, the uh, BX to XD I know is equal to BC over AD. But now, since this is a ratio, I can always multiply a ratio by one, by, by one half. BC, AD. Why did I do that? Well, I mean, I, obviously I didn't change the ratio since uh, the number, uh, numerator and denominator are multiplied by the same number. But half of BC is BM. That's why I did it. And half of AD is ND. So, what I have is, let's just wipe out this piece. I have this, BM over ND. And this is exactly the proportionality which I need. BX over XD is the same as BM over ND. So BMX and XDN have equal angle, and sides which form this angle are proportional. So it means that we have similarity of triangles BMX and XDN. From similarity follows the angles which are supposed to be equal to each other. But now let's think about BXD is a straight line. Therefore MXN also must be a straight line and this is basically the situation. If this is a straight line, okay, if I will put it any other way, not as a straight line, then this angle will not be equal to this. Since I can always continue this line and have a vertical one and it will be small. So, if these angles are equal to each other, it necessitates that since BXD is a straight line, MXN also supposed to be a straight line. So if I connect M to N, it will intersect uh, both diagonals exactly at the point X of their own intersection. All right, next. Given triangle ABC, segment AL is a bisector of angle BAC. Okay, ABC ABC and this is angle bisector. Prove that point L divides side BC proportionally to corresponding sides AB and AC that form angle BAC. In other words, I have to prove that AB over AC is equal to BL over LC. This over this is equal to this over this. Well, Actually, this is one of those interesting moments in mathematics when uh, it's a very interesting and uh, in some way aesthetically appealing uh, result, which is not really obvious. I mean, there are many very plain theorems which are kind of obvious. This is definitely not an obvious theorem. That this length over this, if this is a bisect, by angle bisector, relates the same as BL to LC. However, this is true, 
So let's try to prove it. I'll put it on the top. AB over AC, BL over LC. However, considering that this is not really uh, an obvious thing, the proof is not really very difficult. Here it is. Let's draw a line from C parallel to AL until it intersects until it intersects at point D with continuation of AB. So AL is parallel to DC. Well, since they are parallel, obviously these angles as corresponding are equal to each other. Okay. At the same time, this angle and this angle are also uh, equal to each other because we have again parallel, transversal, and these are alternate interior. But since AL is an angle bisector, these two are equal to each other, so I will use just one part rather than two. And same thing here. Now, what do we have now? We have that these two angles are equal to each other, because this one is congruent to this, and this one is congruent to this, and these are congruent to each other, since AL is an angle, angle bisector. Okay, that helps. Now, why is this helping? Here is why. In this particular uh, equality which I have to prove, I will exchange AC with AD. Since these two angles are equal to each other, ACD is a isosceles triangle, which means that this and this, these sides are the same. So AC is equal to AD. But now, if you will look at the triangle DBC, obviously it is similar to ABL, right? Because these are two parallel lines, this one and this one. So these triangles are similar to each other. All angles are equal, etc., etc. Uh, now, from their similarity, we see that uh, AB and, and AD this ratio of this over this is equal to this over this. Because this is an angle, if you remember actually we had a theorem about this, that if you have an angle and parallel lines, then they cut proportional uh, segments. So the relationship between these segments is exactly the same as the relationship between those. Or you can use similarity of triangles, which is exactly the same thing. Which basically is what we have to prove, except this is AD and this is AC. But as we have already pointed out, they are equal to each other. And that proves the original theorem. That the bisector, angle bisector, divides an opposite side proportionally to the sides which form this angle. Very interesting theorem. And in, in some way unusual, I would say, or unexpected. There are some theorems which are unexpected and look very, very aesthetically appealing, as I was saying. All right. <clears throat> that was number six. All right. Given triangle ABC, with unequal sides AB and BC.
segment AM on equal sides AB and AC. Okay. Right. AB and AC on equal. Okay, fine. Now AM is the median of side BC. So this is M midpoint. Uh, segment okay. Segment AL is a bisector of the same angle. So this is L. AL is a bisector. So AM is median. AL is angle bisector. Finally, AH is an altitude. Proof that the lengths of these three segments are related as AH less than AL less than AM. So if these two sides are not equal to each other, then altitude is smaller than angle bisector, and angle bisector is smaller than the median. Well, obviously, if these sides are equal to each other, then they all coincide, and they're all equal to each other. But if sides are different, then there is such a ratio between, uh, not ratio, there is such a relationship between altitude, angle bisector, and median. Median is the longest, now, the fact that altitude is the shortest is obvious, because altitude is the perpendicular, and we have learned many, many uh, uh, lectures ago that the perpendicular from a point to a line is the shortest distance. So, I'm not talking about this. This is obvious. Let's think about this. So, we have... We don't really need this. I actually added it just for completeness. So we have a, a, a median and uh, an angle bisector. And we have to prove that angle bisector is uh, smaller than the median. Now, here is how we can do it. Think about the previous theorem which I have just proven. It stated that AB over AC equals to BL over LC, right? Angle bisector divides the opposite side proportionally to sides which form the angle. Now, let's um, assume for definiteness that AB is smaller than AC. So we have been given information that they are not equal. So one of them is smaller, another is bigger. So let's say AB is smaller. Since AB is smaller than AC, this is less than 1. AB is smaller than AC, which means BL over LC is less than um, 1. So BL is less than LC, right? Now, since BL BL is less than LC, then the point M, the point L, is shifted towards B from the midpoint, because M is a midpoint, BM is equal to MC, because AM is a median. So, as we see, um, the proportionality of these uh, segments, BL and LC, to unequal AB and AC causes the fact that point L is shifted from the middle towards point B. Now, uh, what does it actually mean? Well, it means that 
if you again remember our old theorems, we were talking about that the closer the point uh, is to the base of the perpendicular, the shorter it is, the shorter this, the, the segment is. Um, basically, that's exactly what's causing AL to be uh, less than AM. Since AL is shorter, here is our H again, um, is shorter than uh, since a since L is closer to H than M, AL is shorter than AM. There is one uh, consideration which I kind of silently omitted here. Is it possible that AL, while being closer to B, will actually overshoot the H and B on this side? Well, the answer is no, it's not possible. However, um, its proof should be, you know, slightly different, and it depends actually on the fact that um, that point L. Let's just wait for my telephone to come down. Um, it actually is related to the fact that since this is um, a perpendicular, A H is a perpendicular, and we have that A B is smaller than uh, than AC, it means that point B is closer to H than point C. And since uh, this is an angle bisector, it should be closer to the C, which is, uh, which is much farther from, 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 from the H than B. So that's basically kind of consideration, which I'm not really pretending that this is 100% robust, but still, it's uh, that, that's where you should really maybe continue to research yourself and try to prove it a little bit more rigorously. Um, this is an interesting point, but it, it, nevertheless, um, what is important is to always base the fact that um, the length of the AL should be as uh, should be shorter the closer it is to uh, the base of the perpendicular H. All right. And I think I still have one more uh, theorem to prove. Which is number eight. Given triangle and three altitudes, A, B, C, and three altitudes, D, E, and F. Okay, uh, connect points D, E, and F. Connect points D, E, and F. To form a triangle. And prove that each of these small triangles is similar to the original triangle ABC. This is also quite an interesting theorem, and again, I would say unexpected. So AFE is similar to ABC. Okay, how can we prove that? Well, let's consider two triangles. ABE, which is a right triangle, and AFC. Now, 
these are right triangles, right? Because BE is perpendicular and CF is perpendicular. And they share the same angle BAC, right? So this triangle and this triangle, both are right triangles. They share the same acute angle, which means they are similar because this, another angle, uh, uh, acute angle also will be equal to each other. So they are similar. Now, from their similarity, we can draw a proportional analogy of their sides, right? So let's consider, let's say, a smaller catheters of A, A, B, E, which is A, E. Now, it's uh, related to, it's against this angle, these two arcs. Now, in this triangle, against these two arcs, a smaller catheters, A, F. Now, how about hypotenuses? They're supposed to be proportional too. So AB in ABE, AB, hypotenuse to AC, hypotenuse in AFC. Now, now let's consider this triangle. Let me just wipe out everything, except one. So, now let's consider AFE and ABC. Well, again, the angle is common. And now we have the proportionality of the sides, AE. We can exchange these, right? AB, AF, to AC. So AE relative to AB is like AF relative to AC. So basically, if you would like these two to be parallel, you have to turn it upside down. Uh, but anyway, this proves actually that these triangles are similar to each other because there is a common angle and proportional sides. Well, in exactly the same way we can prove that the triangle on uh, tri the small triangles um, at, at, other, at other vertices uh, exactly similarly in exactly the same fashion. Well, that basically proves the point that these triangles are similar. Again, something which is, I would say, unexpected, but interesting. Well, that concludes my today's lecture about different theorems uh, related to similarity. I will probably have another one. And don't forget, go back to notes, uh, go on this site, unizor.com, go to the notes for this lecture, and try to repeat basically all these proofs yourself. And if you can't, go back to the lecture, listen it again, and, um, and well, finish it up completely. I mean, it's very, very important for you to uh, be able to prove on your own. Not just understand what I'm saying. Just, it should be inculcated in your, in your mind. Because again, as, as you remember, the whole purpose of this site is to develop your mind. Thank you very much.